Elden Ring is an incredibly open game, sometimes a bit intimidatingly so. Though it does have a sort of structured overarching story that gently hints at the order in which you might like to attempt different areas and bosses, it's easy to miss this and anyway, very little of its huge swathes of optional content is restricted by progressing through the story. So you can pretty much head out in any direction from the moment you start the game and carry on that way before you eventually hit a boss-shaped roadblock. That said though, exploring far off reaches of the map is inevitably going to lead you into some places that are a bit beyond your capabilities, especially early in your game. And although you can always use torrent to get away from danger, or use stealth mechanics and distractions to sneak past a lot of enemies and grab higher level loot, you will eventually have to face off against foes and there is a sort of preferable order of locations to do that in. So let us share some info on those early areas in this latest Elden Ring for Dummies guide. But do make sure and check out our other more general tips and tips for combat if you haven't already done so. Enjoy! Your adventure starts in Limgrave, and although you technically can head straight to some neighboring territories, either by crossing their borders on foot or hoof, or through teleportation, you should really resist this temptation until later on. Limgrave is designed to be an extended tutorial of sorts, a place in which to find your groove with Elden Ring's unique systems and mechanics. Plus. Hidden in its many optional dungeons and encounters are a large number of items specifically intended to be acquired early on. Summoning bells, whetstone knives, basic equipment, cookbooks, and so on. And you likely will find later areas unnecessarily difficult if you rush off to find them without first practicing the basics here. One of the first things you'll want to do in Limgrave, or any of the other new areas that you arrive in in Elden Ring, is grab the map fragment, so make sure and prioritize that. In the same encampment as Limgrave's map fragment, you'll find the Whetstone Knife, which is needed to modify your weapons using Ashes of War, an important skill for maximizing your damage and making the most of affinities. Check out our guide on Elden Ring's combat to learn more about that. Also, while you're early on in Limgrave, Go to the beach. On the beach close by your starting location, you'll soon notice a trail of glowing lights appearing in a kind of circular pattern close to the water. This is actually an invisible scarab enemy, and you'll see this again in later areas while exploring the world. If you stand directly in its path and time an attack so that you strike it just as it gets to you, you'll receive the Ash of War containing the stamp Sweep Weapon Art. Make sure and keep an eye out for these and do the same thing for later beetles as well for further unique items. And while still on this beach, make sure and follow the coastline along to meet a new merchant and find a demi-human cave that leads out to an interesting location and one that you should make sure and visit if you're planning on making a faith build character. Basically, Limgrave is full of opportunities, and if you want to be decently leveled to take on Margit and Stormvale Castle beyond, we would recommend making full use of the many optional dungeons where you can practice your combat, obtain new spells, weapons and items, and generally level up, making things easier later on down the line. The entire Weeping Peninsula, south of Akiel Lake, is great for this. Remember that as we've said before, leveling up is really important, but to really maximize your damage output, you need to be upgrading your weapons too. It's a good idea to have your weapon leveled up to at least plus three before taking on Margit, or plus one if it's a special weapon. You'll need smithing stones to level up your weapon with the anvil at the Church of Ella, up to plus three, or the blacksmith at Roundtable Hold for anything beyond that. Somber smithing stones are required for special weapons, and you can usually find lots of both kinds of stones in a mine optional dungeon. Now, pretty much every area in the Lands Between has a mine that you can use to farm stones for equipment upgrades. You can quite easily spot them on the map. And you'll find Limgraves, the Limgrave Tunnels, tucked into the southwestern tip of Agheel Lake. 
The enemies in this dungeon are pretty resistant to all physical attack types except strike damage. So if you're using a mainly melee based character, we would say bring a blunt weapon like a club or a spiked club to make things a bit easier for yourself. Magic users, on the other hand, should already have a pretty easy time of it. One more area we recommend you look out for in Limgrave is Saints Bridge, an area a little bit further north. Once you find its site of grace, follow the road west into the mountains and you'll hear a cry for help. Follow it and you'll meet Warrior Jar Alexander, one of Elden Ring's best characters. Help him out of the hole he's stuck in and he'll reward you with an exalted flesh and a little chat about Kaled. But that's not where we're headed just yet. Well played. Though that mighty wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me. Once you defeat Godric the Grafted, the boss of Stormvale Castle, we recommend upgrading your weapon to at least plus four before taking him on, by the way, your path will be cleared to venture into Leonia of the Lakes a vast, low-lying wetland to the north of Stormvale Castle. This beautiful location is a bit flatter than Limgrave once you reach its main areas, and thankfully, this means it can be a good bit easier to traverse as well. Things are a great deal more dangerous here though, so be wary while you explore. You do have one important thing to do before Leonia, however. After defeating Godric the Grafted in Stormvale Castle, you'll receive Godric's Great Rune, but unfortunately, it doesn't hold any power. To give the rune its power, you'll need to backtrack through Stormvale to the Limgrave Tower Bridge, which can be accessed by working your way from the inner ward of the castle toward the front gate along the main path. At roughly the halfway mark, turn left, that's east-northeast, through the ground floor of a large tower and you'll find the site of grace just beyond. Alternatively, and much easier, if you asked for the main gate to be opened when you first arrived at the castle, you can pick your way through the courtyard carefully that way. An extremely aggressive lion will be waiting for you in the courtyard hidden on the inner side of the tower, but you can run past it into the tower if you like. Follow the path beyond all the way to the end, dodging or fighting some golems along the way, and you'll find a portal to take you to the Divine Tower of Limgrave. At the top of this tower, you'll be able to restore Godric's Rune to its full power. Returning to the Round Table Hold now, you'll find a new door is open and you'll be able to move the story along. It's maybe a good idea to check back in here often, for new items you'll unlock as you defeat new bosses. You'll acquire a few great runes as you move through Elden Ring's story, and most of these will require finding the area's divine tower in order to be used to their full potential. The big exception to this rule is actually Leonia. No spoilers, but we can explore more of why that is if you're interested in learning about special side quests in a later video. Be aware that even after restoring a Great Rune's power, you'll still need to equip it via the Great Rune's option at a Site of Grace, and then use a Rune Arc consumable item in order to actually get the benefit of its effect. Rune Arcs are fairly rare, so you won't want to use them for just anything, but their effects are pretty powerful temporarily boosting your attributes, your health, and more. When you die, your rune effect is lost until you activate another rune arc, so be careful about when you're using them. Being summoned to help another player defeat a boss can net you rune arcs, but there are also some you can find out in the world as you explore too. Anyway, back to Leonia. Again, you'll want to grab the map fragment first off, so locate the hint on where to find it in the incomplete map, place a beacon on it, and then from your slightly higher vantage point, plot a path towards the beacon. There's a church nearby that you should definitely stop off at to collect a tier first, and you'll doubly want to do that if you're using sorcery. From here, you're heading north-northwest and maybe meeting a merchant on the way. 
It's really useful, by the way, especially if you're still early on in your game, to get into the habit of dropping a marker on the map for every merchant you meet. There are loads of merchants scattered throughout the lands between, and it can be really hard to remember where they're all located. And some do sell items that you may feel tempted to come back and pick up later. So marking them on your map will make all of this so much easier to do later on down the line. Once you have the map fragment that's just a little bit further north from here, you can go ahead and explore the land to continue leveling up with lots of optional encounters. Your ultimate goal here is to find a glintstone key, with which you can access the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. The bad news is this is guarded by a dragon. The good news is that you don't actually have to fight the dragon in order to get it. Never feel bad about taking the path of least resistance if you can, by the way. A lot of these optional bosses will feel next to impossible to defeat the first time you encounter them. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with leveling up a bit before coming back later and enjoying some payback. The Glintstone Key is located just behind Glintstone Dragon Smarag on a corpse. So if you're fast enough, you can ride in on Torrent, grab it, and then ride straight back out again. If you do want to fight Smarag, it's fairly similar to the fight with Agil. Aim for their head, feet, or wings with your melee weapons or any other part of their body with ranged attacks. Though for what it's worth, sorcery is probably not the most effective method of dealing damage here. As you can probably tell by all of this blue aura going on. If you have a larger or more effective melee weapon, you may find the battle easier on horseback. Otherwise, try to stay behind Smarag to avoid their breath attacks and keep the fight near the spire or one of the adjacent rock formations so that you can take cover if you see an incoming breath attack that you can then quickly avoid. With the Glintstone Key, you'll be able to head to the South Rhea Lucaria Gate, examine the seal and teleport to the Royal Academy. It'd be a good idea to ensure your weapon is upgraded to at least plus seven for here, or plus four if it's a special weapon. But before you do, there's a giant lobster wandering around to the south of the Academy Gate Town that, when defeated, will turn into a grafted scion. Defeating this scion again will grant you a rare item known as a larval tier, which will allow you to reallocate any stat points you've gained via leveling up once you meet the right person to give it to. Make sure to take your time to explore Liurnia thoroughly if you want to be as prepared as possible before taking on Rhea Lucaria, the second legacy dungeon of the game. Liurnia is huge and some parts can be fairly challenging, but remember that so long as you're touching Sites of Grace as you go, you can always leave certain places and come back later for a more thorough exploration. My, look at you. Once you defeat the main boss of Rhea Lucaria, you can go back to the round table hold and speak with the finger reader. Having two active great runes, any two active great runes, will mean that you will be granted permission to enter the royal capital of Landell. But despite the game telling you that the capital is your destination, you probably don't want to go there next. Instead, there are a few other places it'll be much better to go to first, so that you can grab some better equipment and upgrade what you already have. From this point in the game, you could go to Kaelid, but we recommend heading to the Altus Plateau first. To get there, you'll need to make your way to the northern end of the Liurnian wetlands and locate a ravine heading north-northeast. Follow the river through the ravine until you reach the Ravine Veiled Village. And from there, locate a series of ladders behind one of the buildings, leading up the cliff face and into a cave. This route will lead you upwards via the ruin-strewn precipice, allowing you to completely circumvent the rolled lift. An alternate way to get to further areas that involves finding two halves of a medallion. The gorgeous and golden Altus Plateau overlooks the urnia of the lakes and was once the site of a great and terrible battle. You may have a rude welcome when you first arrive here, but be aware that you can ignore this initial fight and continue on down the road into Altus Plateau proper. You'll find dungeons and mining tunnels, a creepy forest, a windmill village, and an extremely poisonous dungeon in the north, though that final one might be best saved until later on. In short, you'll find plenty of materials here to upgrade everything you need before venturing to Kaelid, where more extremely tricky enemies await. It's 
possible that you accidentally ventured into Kaled while exploring the eastern areas of Limgrave, and maybe had a nasty surprise or two upon coming face to face with its rot-stricken inhabitants. Again, in mines and tunnels you can find here once grabbing the map fragment, there's valuable upgrade materials to further enhance your weapons, which you will definitely need for this area's main boss encounter. You'll find this at a southern fortress, and it's a pretty unique experience for a From Software battle. Let's just say that the first minute of that fight and what you do with it can really set you up for success or failure here, so you'll want to be as buffed as possible before attempting it. And there's one dragon-infested area of Kaelid that you can come back to later on if you're having trouble, though as you may have seen via other videos already, there are opportunities for rune farming here if that's something you're interested in. After besting the main boss of Kaelid, we recommend exploring Mount Gelmir before heading to the capital city. You can get to Gelmir via the cliff sides of Altus Plateau, where you'll be able to slowly climb to the summit to eventually reach Volcano Manor, which is just the perfect villain lair, really. Fire-resistant gear is recommended here, as is leveling up your equipment with the gear you find in Altus and Kaelid. It'll set you up really nicely for the capital city ahead. The Volcano Manor is fairly straightforward, Though, take your time through its more open locations, as the verticality of these areas leaves you open to quite a few irritating ambushes. A note on Stone Sword Keys while we're here too. These are a super useful consumable item to have in your back pocket no matter where you are in the world. And thus, it isn't always a good idea to use them every time you encounter an imp statue. The areas beyond imp statue barriers typically contain unique items that may or may not be of use to you, but in some cases they serve as shortcuts or even entirely new routes. Yet, this often comes with the caveat that they're also hiding some pretty tough enemies. Be aware too that while most imp statues already have one key inserted, and their barriers can thus be deactivated by using just one more from your own stock, Others, particularly those which block access to the most valuable rewards, require two keys before you can gain access. Beyond these areas we've already mentioned is of course the capital city Landale and, would you believe it, even more areas both far above and deep below ground. This game really is huge. There are also tons of areas you may never even find, unless you're following some pretty obscure hidden quest lines or just getting lucky while out and about. If you do find these places, always remember to talk to NPCs until they start repeating their dialogue, just to make sure you've gotten all possible information out of them. And prioritize hunting down map fragments to make exploration easier. Keep upgrading your weapons, Remembering to check in with your attributes and stat scaling regularly, try out different Ashes of War and Spirit Summons, and you'll generally have an easier time. Oh, and if you ever enter into an area and you suspect a boss fight is coming up soon, don't be afraid to use your consumable golden runes in order to make up the deficit so that you can level up just once more before taking on a boss and potentially putting the runes you're carrying at risk. So, are there any other aspects of Elden Ring you want explained or explored? We're deliberately keeping some parts of these guides vague to avoid spoilers, but if you're interested in finding out more about the different quest lines or bosses or NPCs, or just anything with a few more specifics, let us know and we can plan some future content for you. Keep at it, and we hope these guides are helping you find your way through the world of Elden Ring a little bit easier. Thanks for watching. Bye!